Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. A sitting U.S. senator openly said that Democrats support reparations for those who do the crime. Well, if this is any indication, I think it's safe to say that the GOP will not be supporting reparations. First of all, Tommy Tuberville was a football coach in Alabama, so this is a reminder of the way these racist football coaches see black people. He's just saying publicly the same crap that he said in those locker rooms at Auburn University. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Tuberville beat Doug Jones in Alabama. You'll recall that Doug Jones said practically not a word of gratitude to black people after he won that special election a couple of years back. Doug Jones also never said that he would do anything for black people, and indeed he didn't. He kept black folks at arm's length, and black voters in Alabama returned the favor when he ran for re-election in 2020. Tuberville beat Doug Jones like a drum, whipped him by 20 points. But now Tuberville is feeling his oats. He's not up for re-election until 2027, and he thinks that this will be old news by then. Or perhaps he's probably trying to position himself for a presidential run. All of them good old boy inbreds down there think that they've got presidential potential. Anti-black racism is catnip for these degenerates, so he's feeding the little reprobates red meat. I found it very interesting, though, that no less than the Aryan propagandists did a little bit of a fact check on Tuberville's comments, something that they practically never do, and in their article they wrote that crime is actually down, and most of the crime in the U.S. is committed by white people, according to the FBI. You know, considering that so much of the white media merely copy and paste the articles that the Aryan propagandists put out, that little factoid about the FBI and white criminality is one that should be repeated more often. And those stats would be a lot higher were it not for the abject refusal to arrest, charge, or prosecute these offenders by the police, prosecutors, and judges. Now, of course, after these comments were made, the Republicans were busy deflecting, dodging, and refusing to condemn the open racism of their colleague. One Republican congressman said that he wouldn't have said it the same way. He didn't say he wouldn't have said that at all. He said he would have rephrased it. Now, before I go any further, I always find it interesting how the morons who say that black folks need to vote Republican are nowhere to be found at times like this. Your Larry Elders and other assorted trash, they don't champion these kind of guys. They are nowhere to be seen at times like this. You undercover white supremacists who think that if we don't vote Democrat, that means we'll automatically vote Republican because, you know, black folks, we're obligated to vote for someone, right? Well, you morons can sit down. This is the political party you expect us to vote for, and for what? An honest enemy is still my enemy. But for all of you white supremacist punks and bootlicks who think that you might trot out one of your cherry-picked, hand-picked Negroes to try to talk us down on reparations, you might want to think twice. Because the folks over at Pew Research released a poll in August of this year. Black people are united when it comes to reparations, and that includes black Republicans and conservatives, regardless of Pew Research's best efforts to try to make phony distinctions and differences where none really existed. Because Pew conducted a poll of black adults, and according to their numbers, they found that 64% of black Republicans they spoke to said that we should get reparations. Yes, yeah, 64% of black Republicans said they want the check. And they found that 71% of black respondents who identified as conservatives said to cut the check. So all you white supremacist trash out there who overdose on Candace Owens' asinine rantings, just so you know, a lot of those black people are running pure game on you. A lot of black folks know that there is quick and easy money to be made living that sellout life, so they play the game and get some easy cash out of you marks. But as Amarosa and Stacey Dash and others have shown, as soon as the GOP kicks them to the curb, they'll be the first ones throwing up the black fist, raggedy as it is, trying to get us to support them and saying they were with us all along. Also, because Pew is an apparatus of the dominant society, they contradict themselves when they try to downplay black support for reparations. In one sentence, Pew claimed that regionally there's differences in what black respondents said as to whether slavery affected black people a great deal. Then two paragraphs later, they say a large majority of black adults, 77%, think the descendants of people enslaved in the U.S. should be repaid in some way. 
Now, you can't say in one breath that only 53% of blacks in the South, 51% in the Midwest, and 62% in the Northeast say that slavery affected us a great deal, and then follow that with 77% of all black respondents said that slave descendants should be repaid in some way. But also notice what Pew Research says. People enslaved in the U.S. They didn't say slave descendants overall. They're talking about specifically here in the United States. So that whole thing about trying to grandfather clause in everybody else, what they're seeing is that's dying a very slow, very painful death. You're not going to grandfather clause in everybody else. Just understand that the way the questions are formed, that has a great deal to do with how people give their answers. But the most interesting part of the Pew poll had to do with cash payments. They took that issue on directly, but not to try to support it. Pew tried to claim that scholarships or business financing or home financing was more important to black people than cash payments. Now, as I've explained, how questions are asked has a great deal to do with how people answer them. But the most important thing is Pew felt that they had to single out the question of cash payments. They didn't say reparation support differs when it comes to scholarships or home financing assistance. They didn't say those things are more important. What they were saying was cash payments. Well, that's not so important to black people. They specifically singled out the issue of cash payments. They didn't focus on what their poll claims black people want. They instead focused entirely on, well, this cash payments thing. We got to say this cash payments thing. Is that, that's not so important to them. They specifically singled out cash payments because they wanted to use this poll as some sort of certification that black people don't really want cash payments. Somebody at Pew wanted us to think black folks don't really support cash payments as much as scholarships. This is why you see chumps like Roly Poly Martin saying scholarships all the time. This is the line directly from white mommy and white daddy. Claim that scholarships are reparations. Housing vouchers are reparations. Um, give them a gift card for widgets. Anything but actual cash. And then you can turn around later and claim, well, this is what black people said they want. It was black people's idea, not ours. You know, like Bill Clinton when talking about how he passed Biden's law, the 94 crime. But, well, it was all those black preachers. What am I doing? Why they forced me to do it? This is one of white supremacy's favorite tactics. Go ahead and mess black people over, then say it was all black people's idea. But, of course, it's a lie. If you give black people the check, we can go to whatever school we want. We can buy whatever house or start whatever business we want. The money is the foundation of all of it. Why go to an end result when with the money you can do anything? This is weasel words on Pew's part, but it's meant to give talking points to racists who will try to cite this poll as evidence that black people don't really want cash. So they can claim that, well, we're not sure how much good cash payments would do. And anyway, there was a poll a while back, wasn't there, that said black people really wanted scholarships instead. So that's what we're going to do. This is about trying to set up a scam where they can bypass black people's bank accounts altogether because that's the most important thing. That's the goal. Make sure that you bypass black people's pockets altogether. Well, we'll do scholarships so the money can go directly to white universities. Well, we'll go ahead and give them a, some sort of housing voucher so we can go to a white bank or a white mortgage company. But the fact that Pew did this to single out cash payments as something to diminish an attack, that shows they've heard what we've said and they're desperately trying to get out in front of it. This poll is merely meant to try to make us think that support for cash reparations or for reparations in general is far lower than it actually is. The poll contradicts itself. And that's how you know that this is a push poll where they ask questions meant to push the person being polled into responding a particular way. Then they can cherry pick the parts that they want and ignore the rest. Nonetheless, the numbers on support for reparations is far higher than the white media's told you, isn't it? Black people who claim to be Republicans, they'll say one thing when they're on Fox News or whenever they're around people from the white right. But as soon as you get them in private, that's when they tell the truth. Because not one of them is seriously going to turn down that check. That's against the Republican ethos, don't you know? And the reason that I cite this poll is because the white media loves to try to push the lie that the black community is divided on the issue of reparations. But despite Pew Research's best efforts, you can see we're not divided at all. We never have been. And now it's to the point that their polling organizations have to acknowledge that fact. Because they know the same thing that you know. 
The number one reason, in fact, really the only reason that some black people might say that they don't support reparations isn't because they don't think that it's right. It's because they don't think this racist government will ever pay it. And because it makes certain white people and other non-black people feel a certain way, well, some black folks don't want to get into an argument about it. But that's the real reason. They don't think the government will actually do it. And for a while, it seemed so far away and so unrealistic because we waited to see if professional do-nothing groups like NCOBRA or the Congressional Black Talkers would ever act on it, and they haven't. The black grassroots, however, moved and things are happening. And now those same black people who said that they weren't in favor of reparations just a couple of years ago, now that they see some states talking about it, however duplicitous they may be, even black conservatives are saying, cut the check. So all you right wing nuts out there, next time you see your favorite token Negro on Fox or you see your favorite bootlick clown on YouTube, just keep in mind, there's at least a 64% chance he wants you to cut the check. 64%. That means a two out of three chance that while you're busy giving him money to spout some gibberish, he's also got his eye on what we're doing and going, I'm going to be double dipping for that reparations check. This is what the grassroots have done. We've made so much noise that now Pew Research is having to do polls on reparations. But why are they doing it now? Because we made it an issue in the 2022 election and they know it's not going away. That's why you got Republicans who are losing what few marbles they pretended to have over it and why you don't see Democrats giving them any pushback. They don't care about what Tuberville said. In fact, what he said is helpful to them. They want people to think, my whole reparations thing, you know, we better make sure that there's not too much talk about it and that everybody understands this is a bad idea. So you have a racist Republican arguing against something that Democrats aren't even doing and don't even support. From Biden to Elizabeth Warren to Bernie to Negro Jim Clyburn to Raphael Warnock, the Democrats have categorically said they all oppose reparations. And that's why we have to continue to be bold about this. Because even at this early stage, we've already put a spine into a lot of cowardly Negroes. Even black Republican voters are starting to talk like they've got some sense. It's like I've always told you, anti-black racism is a bipartisan issue among the white right and the white left. But now, thanks to you, reparations is a bipartisan issue. For us. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Sabrina, Nora Brown, Quincy X, Shannon Moore, and Alice Ransom. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.